drop in the chat if you can hear me. I might be muted, I'm not sure. Are we muted or are we, can you hear me right now? Is there a big old gorilla on the screen saying the screen's starting to Carbonate is in the chat. Carbonate has entered the room. Let me know, boys. Let me know. Put in that chat, lads. Just let me know if you can hear me right now. Anything coming through, boys. Any audio coming through from me? Ah, what about now? Can you hear me now? Music hella loud, should have just turned the music down. Let's turn the mic up. Just that standard shenanigans when you're coming on to a, when you're going on to a stream. Uh, how do we change the settings on that? Let's have a look. I'm here on my own today, boys. I'm here on my own, no James to help me. I'm out here on my own. So you, you're all saying that you can hear me now, or do I need to make the mic louder? That's what I want to know. Thumbs up for mic is a good, reasonable volume. Justin's just coming through, don't you worry. Justin's just getting his stream sorted out. Exactly, Melvin. Ape tries to use laptop standard procedure. <laughs> cool, Mike's fine. Mike's fine, just waiting for Justin. I'm going to do a small, I'll, I'll turn myself on mute boys. I'm just going to call Justin quickly and check that the audio is good his end. When everything's all good, we can all be on here together. And we can make a podcast. Okay, let's mute myself.
There we go. Welcome boys. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Let me know in the comments. I'm just waiting for Justin to call and then I'll put that gorilla back on. But in the meantime, I'll answer a couple of questions if you've got them in the chat. I hope you're all doing well. It's uh, just coming up to midnight here in Thailand. Feeling wide awake. Feeling very, very good. Good to see you all on here. Let me just keep checking if Justin's ready or not. Am I muted? Yep, you can hear me. Sweet. Sounds good. Sounds working. You can hear me nice and good. Oh, man. Interesting story, actually. And I'll tell you, I'll probably tell Justin when he comes on as well. But I, when I first moved to Thailand, before I started YouTube, before I started anything, and I had barely any money, I started watching Justin. Actually, I'm going to check. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this story for... I'm going to save this story for when Justin's on. Let's message him. Doot, doot, doot. Big collab from the gorillas. Gorilla gang moving up in the world. We will be boys. Mark my words. We'll we'll go for them all. We'll we'll get all the big ones. Justin, I'm a big fan of Justin, so I'm happy to have him on. Seems like a cool guy. He's a fellow ginger slash blonde, strawberry blonde fella. So we've got a lot in common. He likes country music. I like country music. He likes trucks. I like trucks. He likes women. I like women. So should be fun. Should be a good time. Boys, yeah, say, somebody's just put in, D. Philip, anybody here who's got his course and is it worth it? Anyone who's in the tribe, let him know, is it worth it or not? Let him know what he's missing out on. The chat is going to be about masculinity, women and money. The war on masculinity that we're all currently facing Advice for you guys about women, advice for you guys on how you can get your money up. Justin is a guy who made money before going on the internet. So Justin's a real entrepreneur, Justin's a businessman. Um, so it'd be very interesting to, to sort of talk to him about some of that stuff because I think that world is a lot more ruthless than the ways we can make money on the internet now. So that's what the chat will be about, just chatting, chatting with, uh, with good old Justin, maybe ask him what his favorite country music is because, well, it's got to be done, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Harry, thank you. Tribe's best ROI possible in the whole universe. It's true. Man, I love that gorilla. I'm putting him back on. Let's put him back on. James, shout out to you, James, who, uh, James helped me today from a distance set up the stream, because I don't have a clue, but I'm doing all right. Workout basics, just our CEO of testosterone, who's the founder. Um, the founder was Hamza, Hamza gave me the name, because he just thought I was, he thought I was a bit of a wild, a wild guy, so... He gave me the name. We fought each other in the gym. We had this fight, um, sparring match in the, in the boxing gym. And then after that, he, said, he put a video on his Instagram that said CEO of testosterone. That was four months ago. And we haven't looked back since. We've just been, we've been riding trucks. We've been having fun. We've been making vids. It's got to be done. All right, boys. Justin's ready. Let me just do a quick test call with him. And then I'll be back on with me and Justin. Gorilla's back, mute myself.
it's not a bad it's not a bad card to be dealt, bro. Well, I was just thinking, you've got to play the game where it's in your favour. And England, although it was all right, I was still getting chicks in England. It was still all right fun. I just thought it's not playing the game in my favour. So for me right now, Thailand is the place to be. What would you... What would you say about that, living in the States? Because a lot of my audience is from the US and I sort of recommend maybe they look at moving to Southeast Asia in, in sort of modern day. You know, I can't speak for Southeast Asia, but I can tell you that I think the game is the most hard in America and probably in England as well. It could be harder in England, actually. You know, um, it's been my experience that being outside of the Western world makes it substantially easier. If I were a guy that weren't as gifted, I think I would probably deeply consider going somewhere where the, the playing field was a little bit more level for me. Mm. Um, but I do have a business in America, and because of that and just a, a few small other reasons, I stay in America for now. Miami is pretty much the closest thing. I'm in... I'm in my, my other house in Baton Rouge right now. Uh, I miss Miami. My house is nice here. It's cool. But the town isn't. And if my business weren't here, I'd never be here. If that makes sense. Can I still get women here? Yes. Will they be as open to the, uh, to the shenanigans <laughs> <laughs> that, that I tend to, to live? Probably not as much. Not in the deep south for sure. So Miami is kind of the closest thing. You, you and Tate actually inspired my shenanigans. I was, I was very much a, a sort of a, a one yeah. girl kind of guy. I just thought that was the way you had to play the game, that you had to have just the yeah. one girlfriend. Um, but after watching your content... Let me ask you a question about that, though. Is that what you actually wanted, or is that what you thought you could, you could have? Because I find that most men, if they're being completely honest and nobody's looking, if you came up to them and you told them, hey, listen... You know, you can absolutely be in love with a girl and give her your whole heart and love her and do the sweet things that people do when they're in love and all that good shit. But you can get, still get women on the side that you don't love. Almost every man would take that. In my experience, when I've asked people in, in a room full of nobody, you know? Yeah, 100%. 100% I agree with you. And I, I think that was always what I thought when I was in the UK and I had a girlfriend. I was always looking at other girls. I, always, I wanted to be with other girls. But I wouldn't let myself back then because I was so sort of indoctrinated. But when I came to Thailand, it became yeah, no. became a viable option. And I used some yeah. of the I used some of the tips that you boys dropped about um, giving girls the option, being like, "Look, this is how I roll. If you if you're cool with it, then you can stay and we can hang out. And I'd like to sort of look after you. But if you're not cool with it, then uh, then you're, then you're cool to leave. And and I've done that now, and I've got sort of a main chick and then some some side chicks. So. So thanks you to... would be shot. You know, it's kind of like the four-minute mile in a lot of ways. People just don't believe that it's possible. And then somebody does it, and they're like, you know what? I think I could try that. And I think, I think guys, especially guys that have their, their shit together, would be shocked at how often women are like, okay, you know, no problem. Because the truth is, I think in the bottom of their stomach, they know that, um, that every man, if given the option, would do it. And so being truthful with them and being the kind of guy that actually she knows that you'll do it, but else will take that deal and put you in a better position to negotiate. And I honestly, I think it makes her a bit more happy too, because she, she, in a lot of ways, knows you're not going to leave. That might get her in the face later, but it is what it is. Mm. Like, am I going to leave a girl I love and that kind of doesn't give me a hard time about something that all men really want to do if they're being honest? No, nah, I'm not leaving that girl ever. She might leave me. But then, then we have a different subject matter. Then it's, you know, how strong can you be in your mind? How, you know, how which do is you, uh, not how, always the easiest thing, but it's very possible. How do you deal with that sort of feeling of... Because obviously when you stay with... When you have sort of your main girl and you start to get feelings for her, you start to spend more time with her, there's like this little part that feels a bit guilty for me at the moment, just a little bit guilty, even though I know I'm being honest. How do you sort of get around that? Why do I feel that way? You have to keep guys that are of the same like mind close to you. Um, I have Sterling. I don't know if you know who Sterling Cooper is. I oh, know Sterling Cooper, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have Sterling, and we have something called piece of shit receipts. And so what you have to do is, like, you have guilt embedded into you. 
it, like, I'll be honest with you. Let me say this. Yeah. If I could snap my fingers and just love one woman my entire life, and I think I can love one woman, but just sleep with one woman and be happy with that and not have the... Dude, I would take that. I think my, um, I think my net worth would 100x, honestly. I find, I find that feeling in, inside of men to be a bit distracting, but uh, since, since there's no way to take that magic pill, you have to change your relationship with guilt because it all comes from guilt, right? Um, I actually, I, I tell this story a lot, but I broke up with my college girlfriend that placed third place at Miss America that year because I felt guilty about wanting to sleep with some cheerleaders and some soccer players and a golf player too. Like it's, it's, it's the silliest thing. So um, you have to change your relationship with guilt and you kind of have to kind of make a joke of it. And that's what Sterling and I do. We have, we have what we call piece of shit receipts. And it's like, you saw this one on Tuesday and you saw that one on Thursday, you know, and we're just making fun of each other. Uh, about being pieces of shit because what is the world going to call you a piece of shit immature they're going to tell you to grow up all these other things but you know i don't i don't look at maturity as oh can you submit and not get the life that you want because most men want the life that we live if i'm being completely honest so let's not fuck around act like i'm not responsible i employ 130 people that's probably what 150 people when you get down to the families i'm fucking responsible i'm not going to sit here and act like i don't want to sleep with women to make somebody happy or somebody that thinks they can put guilt on me um just so just so i can think that everybody loves me that's fucking bullshit so piece of shit receipts that'll do it get a buddy that that is much like it you join the war room you find plenty of guys that will that will you know do piece of shit receipts with you mate that's awesome because my best friend is flying out here in two days um to come live in thailand as well so he's called jack mm -hmm. i'm called jack we used to go out together we just say we are jack we meet chicks we just say we are jack both our names are jack yeah sorted nice does your girl live with you she's upstairs right now yeah she's upstairs she'll be watching on the tv okay so that makes it really hard right because then like she's expecting you home and shit so when you're you know when you're catting around that makes it hard um i like living with sterling in miami and then you know keeping keeping distance because you can get under siege man mm. You know, they keep knocking on the door. Well, we've so. got. I, I always thought about that because uh, it's one of the cardinal sins moving in with a moving in with a girlfriend, especially at my age. So we've got a second place, uh, yeah. a bungalow in down fur, further down the road that she can stay at um, whenever things get a little bit things get a little bit too close. Um, but she's actually really amazing. Like, I know she's watching this right now, but she's actually a really cool girl. Like, she's she's pretty decent. With yeah. Me. And um, she's I completely, I completely understand that. You should keep her. Yeah. You know? She's doing the everything. The advice I would give you. Oh yeah, you go, you so, go. Well, the advice I would give you on that is make sure she knows she's number one, man, and make sure it's not even close. You know, so uh, I think a lot of guys that watch red pill content, they think that you can't, you know, open doors, take her to dinner, do special shit for her, write her a note before you leave, like love on her, you know, love on her for real, bro, because I, to me. I, I believe in love. I'm not all of this fuck these hoes and all this other stuff. I'm just purely about, hey, let's not bullshit. Men want to sleep with other women, but they can love a woman. And so with that, that last part, I think that anybody that's in this situation has that honesty with their girl should love the fuck out of her. You know, treat her very well. Make it a landslide victory for her where she knows you're not leaving. You're not treating these other girls any any better than her in any way. And it's not even close, man. I think any girl that that can have that conversation with you and stays deserves that. So yeah, that's I, the I, advice I would give. I genuinely I, I agree with you because recently I did a trip to Bangkok, um, the city of sin. And uh, I went there alone and I, was, I had some hookups yeah. with a couple other girls. And... Uh, just, just the feeling of being with the other girls, and especially if you're watching this right now, my, my girl upstairs, um, like being with those other girls, you might be with them for sex or to take them out and, and have a decent time, but it isn't the same as like your main girl and that feeling you have like for each other, I don't think. So. No, it's not. It doesn't come And I'll close. tell you another thing, man. I think you'll agree with this. If somebody told you you can have sex one more time in life and you're going to die tomorrow, you'd pick your girl. 
Yeah, oh, but normally so. the sex is way better actually with your with your main. With it's your way team. better with your girl. Yeah. Way better with your girl. It, it, I'm telling you, man, it's some monkey shit. It's some dumb monkey. Like we're just monkeys, bro. <laughs> it's it's way better with your girl. It's not even close, man. It's we not are. Even close, bro. Yeah, we're definitely monkeys. My boys are cool and gorillas. We're gorilla tribe. So welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> welcome to the gorilla tribe, Justin. Oh, thanks, brother. <laughs> Send me the t-shirt, man. <laughs> I will do. Um, for anyone that doesn't yeah. know you, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do? Because I know you're, you're a pretty decent businessman before you even got on the, on the internet. You're not a, like an internet millionaire, you're, you're a proper businessman. Yeah, man. So uh, my name's Justin Waller. You can find me on YouTube, Jay Waller. I built a steel company. I started at 24. I'm going into my 12th year now. I have a little over 130 men. 15 states. We work all across America and the Caribbean. Uh, Construction is a tough business. I didn't know, I guess, what I was getting myself into, but that was the consciousness I had is the only way we knew how to make money. Doctor money was in cowboy boots or work boots. And uh, so that's what I chose to do. It was rigid, but it gave me a lot of really good skills that I think have transitioned over to the internet. Um, so yeah, now I still run the steel company. I have a great operations manager and a management team and really good systems in. So it allows me to travel uh, and buy more real estate. In fact, I just bought uh, 12 more units here in Baton Rouge and I have a meeting this afternoon to buy the rest of the guys' buildings, which would be 13 more buildings, man. So I'm just uh, trying to invest, trying to hold on to as much money as I can from a task perspective and create layers of income and live my life, man. That's it. So, um, and how did YouTube, I do a lot of how, yeah. how, how did YouTube happen for you? Because I, I sort of got into it because I think there's a, essentially a war on masculinity. There's a war suppressing men uh, in the modern day. And, and that's what my YouTube was for. Is yours similar? Was that sort of the mindset you were in when you started? Man, you know, I, kinda, I feel like I fell into the space. Um, I joined the war room. I had always wanted it. The timing was... was almost like a perfect storm, if you will, because I joined the war room. That really helped me handle my guilt all the way. I was still doing what I wanted, but I couldn't enjoy it. Um, so I joined the war room. I started to see things at a broader scale. I was really already making good money. I was really in shape, all these other things. I always wanted to do the YouTube thing, but didn't think it was time. And I was just really hitting my stride and it being that time. And uh, obviously I met Andrew and Tristan I met Rolo Tomasi. Rolo brought me on a show. Then, of course, Sterling brought me on a show. And Sterling had a channel, and I met Sterling through the war room. So I, I'm in Miami at a Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin conference, and I tell Sterling, I said, man, I'm moving over here because I just had enough of Louisiana. I needed to change atmosphere. And I'm really big on changing atmosphere because when I got to Miami, it was just like, boom, turn the camera on. Let's go. And so I kind of fell into the red pill space, but funny enough, I have such a passion for helping young men anyway, uh, because it was, it was me. Like I was a kid that needed that when I was 24, starting my business. I feel like in a lot of ways, I grew up on, on watching YouTube guys. I spent a lot of time with YouTubers trying to figure out ways to make my business better, to be a better businessman, to be a better person, to be, a, I mean, just a better man altogether, fitness, everything. And so now, um, when I look at my channel, I feel like if I help enough people out, I don't know if you know this, but outside of me promoting the war room, I don't have a course. And I'm not saying it'll always be that way, but I am saying that for me, I truly feel good about getting those messages that I help people. That there's some kid somewhere that's going through something that I've been through and I'm gonna help him and I think that it'll come back to me a hundredfold. I really do. I think it might not always be internet money. I think it'll probably be real life business, probably real estate deals, if I'm being honest. Mm. Investors, things like people that want to invest with me. But for now, I think my, my only goal is to let people understand who I am, get to know me, and for me to be able to help them in some way without you know, really worrying about dropping a course or anything, because I think in the end, you know, there is win-wins and I think it'll come back to me a hundredfold. So yeah, man, it is everything about having the most abundant life as a man.
That's sure. awesome. For guys that are sort of starting out now, because a lot of my audience, they're sort of 16 to 25, and then we've got a few older ones, yeah. but, but that's, the, that's the main group. What should they be focusing on in that age range? Because there's so much out there people are telling them. What, what, would, you, what would your advice be to somebody in that age range Fitness. to focus on? Fitness all the way. Fitness all the way. I think people, over, I think people, especially young guys, they put money up there with fitness. I almost make the chicken or the egg argument that if you handle fitness first, that money will be substantially easier. And I say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, you will spend less time chasing women because you'll absorb women if you're in shape. If you turn yourself into a Chad by creating an incredible body, it makes getting women so, so, so substantially easier, which gives you more time to focus on money. And the reason I think it helps you with money is twofold. Number one, you have more energy, more blood flow to your brain to actually think clearly and make decisions fast. And you have the energy to act on those decisions. In addition, when you walk into a room and you're in shape, especially a room full of men, people have to respect you. They fucking have to. It gives you an advantage. People assume you're smarter. They respect you more. They're more likely to give you a deal. They're more likely to give you a tip. They're more likely to do the extra things for you to help you succeed because you're in shape. I put fitness as number one, especially 16 to 25. There's absolutely no doubt about that in my mind. Got you. And I totally agree with you on that. Reason why. So when I got into YouTube, I, I met a guy called Hamza. Have you, have you heard of Hamza? Hamilton? Hamza. No, sir, I haven't. Hamza, he's, like a, he's a big self-development YouTuber in, um, in England, and I met him. In, I bet. I met him in Thailand. Hook me up, man. I met him in I Thailand, him. and then he, was, uh, he, he saw how good a shape I was in. I was, pretty, I was a lot bigger at the time, about seven kilos heavier, but muscle. And uh, he saw how good a shape I was in, and we became friends, and he had like a, just under a million subs on, on YouTube. And that's how my channel got, uh, got a boost, was by meeting him, but... The reason he was happy to say hello to me, to respect me as a man, was because I was in, in incredible shape. Um, so yep. I, I've seen that firsthand and definitely with the women as well. Yep. They love those muscles. Yeah, it makes things easier. It's like, you know, if you knew you could buy a girl dinner and she was guaranteed that she was going to sleep with you, um, you would buy dinner. Oh, yeah. But if you, could, if you could build those muscles and you knew guaranteed women were going to sleep with you, you should build those muscles. It's, you don't have to buy dinner now, G. It's like, it's, I mean, it, it's a cheat code to life in every area of life. Every area. People aren't going to start on you as much. Be, having big muscles doesn't mean you can fight, but it's like, why pick the jack dude? You know? So I just, it's, there, there's infinite, there's no non-benefit to being in great shape. So that's, that, that's sort of ground zero, if you've got the shape sorted out, because this is what I had for a while. I was in great shape for a while, but I didn't have a clue about money or business. I was making no money at all. So what would you recommend? Let's say, Justin, you went back and you were 18 now, you're already jacked. What are the businesses, business models you'd focus on as a young man in the modern day? Yeah, modern day, I, I would get on Hustlers University probably and try to figure out a way to make money online. I would definitely make money online. I would make sure that it was reoccurring if I could. And I would start some sort of personal brand if, if I felt good about it in my mind. I, I don't think I could have started a personal brand until the time I did because I grew up in a very suppressive place where it was like, you know, talk with your actions. So it just, it was a, it was a barrier I had to overcome personally. But I can tell you, anybody that is able to go online and sell, especially on a reoccurring model, I, th I think that's the most powerful business model in the world. I really, really do. So almost better than real estate in a lot of ways. And I think you probably get this as well, but I get some messages sometimes from guys who are hopeless, like completely hopeless, um, and they're in a bad, dark, dark place. What would you say to a guy that's feeling like that, just like there's really no point in him living, what, what would you say to somebody? Yeah. Because I imagine you get it as well, and it's some of the hardest messages I get on Instagram and, and stuff. Yeah, I would, say, I would say a few things to that. Number one, watch how you talk to yourself. The way you talk to yourself can be a reoccurring curse and spell you're putting on yourself, and I truly mean that. 
Number two, if you feel that way, I think you need a change of atmosphere. You would be shocked at how much putting yourself in an atmosphere that was better, like move to Miami or move to like move to a different place. That's one thing I did because I had this YouTube thing on my mind for such a long time. But living here in South Louisiana, I don't think I ever could have started. I would have stayed in this like the, the atmosphere itself makes me feel smaller, if that makes sense. So pay attention to your atmosphere all the way down to where you live, who lives there, what's in the fucking refrigerator. And if if you can't if you can't overcome it in the atmosphere you're in, I think you'd be shocked at what a new atmosphere could do. Move to Utah, move somewhere where there's beautiful weather, where there's things happening, where it's popping, where you can be, you know, motivated to do those things. The atmospheres are absolutely incredible. And then after that, I would remind you that some of the most impressive people you know of turned their life around in a year, 18 months. They went from zero to just boom, overnight, everybody knows them. So, I mean, if you look at people like, say, Fresh and Myron, they started Fresh and Fit. And when did Fresh and Fit start? Uh, 2020. 2020, bro, it's 2022. I'm walking through London with Myron and Fresh, and they're getting stopped every 10 steps. It's crazy. You know, I, come on, bro, two years? Two years. Their entire life has changed, man. My, look, Fresh can't, Fresh can't quit sleeping with white girls. <laughs> like, that's all he does, bro. <laughs> he's, like, he's on buffet mode. <laughs> so, I mean, I would just remember that, that if you change your atmosphere and you stop talking to yourself in that certain way, and you remember that your whole life can flip upside down for the positive in a very, very short amount of time, then you should be able to turn that around for yourself and don't be shocked when it happens. I can, I can vouch for that because my, I didn't start YouTube. I was not on YouTube four months ago. So this is four months and my life's completely changed. I was just, uh, yeah. I had no money before, and uh, now I've got a channel, building a tribe, building a group of guys, helping people, and that was four months for me from nothing to something, um, something that I'm yeah. proud of, so I'd say that as well, if you're feeling like you, like there's no point in you being around, just know that tomorrow, just try and make it to tomorrow, because you can change things like that, no problem, as long as you don't quit at the end of the day. Hey, hold on, my pool guys here, hold on. Hey, they're good. Yeah. Sorry about that. We yeah. got a uh, we got we got a super chat, um, Justin. I'm going to read it out to you. I think it's absolutely. Been, I'm 23, work in an office. I want to be a GC, general contractor. I'm guessing. I work contracting with dad on the side and want to make it on my own. Any tips for starting fresh? Thanks. Yeah, man. I would read E Myth for contractors. Uh, I would do that. I've thought deeply about starting a construction course. Not a course, really, but like a, like a group to help guys through that process. It's a tough business. It can be very lucrative. Um, but yeah, I would, I would read E-Myth for contractors. And I might even read E-Myth Revisited, especially if you want to build the business by yourself. You have to understand that there's going to be a difference between, you know, the entrepreneurial side of you, the manager side of you, the technician side, the guy that gets it done in the field. I'm very, very in touch with that in my business, and I think it's been uh, one of the one of the cornerstones of why I've been able to be successful, making sure that I have at least all of those three things covered. And then, obviously, there's some in-house things that are special to us that we do. But the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician, particularly the technician in your case, because as you know, the field is crazy. So read E-Myth for Contractors by Robert E. Gerr. I started that book a while ago, but I didn't have a business, so I, so I stopped reading it. But I should yeah, it's probably, a good one. I should probably read that again. I struggle at the moment with starting something out and needing to hire people. Um, what, what do you look for when you hire someone in a, in a business, Justin, just for, for me personally? Yeah, so I look for five things. I look for humble, hungry, smart, excuse me, proven competence, Humble, hungry, smart, and luck. So the way I go about that, let's say, let's say I post a job posting. My recruiting manager has a script. And the first thing on the list is proven competence. I need to know that they're competent. 
Um, so what we do is we ask them very, very loaded metal building questions. Questions that only guys that truly, truly know what they're doing and have been doing it for a long time could answer. And from there, we ask them questions along the lines of whether they're humble or not, because we want to know if they're, they're going to be easy to work with. So are you willing to work under another supervisor until, until you learn how we do it here? Right, those kind of questions. Then um, hungry, are you willing to work weekends or go out of town? Those kind of, you know, are, are you willing to go last minute, et cetera? Smart, we try to get them to talk poorly about their last uh, company or any other company in the past. Because if they'll do it to their other company, they'll while you. they're still working for that company, they'll do, it for, they'll do it to us. And then the last thing I want to know is what their luck is like. People bring luck into their life, man. People can choose to look at things through the lens of luck or misfortune. And I don't want people in my company that can't see through the lens of fortune and the lens of good things happening, the positive lens. Because if, if they come into the company and they're looking through the negative lens, it is very contagious. And I don't want that. And um, the, what we do from there is we use something called the Fibonacci series. You see, if she talks to 100 people, I can't take those 100 phone calls. But what I do is use the Fibonacci series. And the Fibonacci series is basically the concept that when I see things in, in threes, and it's hard to see the difference between four and five, but it's easy to see the difference between one and five, and five and nine, and nine and 13. So for example, if we're on the hungry question, and she says, are you willing to work out of town? And he says, absolutely. I, I would love to anytime. 13. Which is a yes, right? And she asks the next guy and he says, well, yeah, I mean, I would do that. I, you know, I'd do that for y'all. One. They're both yeses. But I can't be on that call. So she's grading them using the Fibonacci series and the highest ranking people talk to my ops manager. Got you. So, so you're looking massively for enthusiasm, basically, if somebody's really raring to go and wants to work for you and has all the other, right. all the attributes. So another and you have to understand, there's a, there's a yes and there's a yes. And there's a huge difference between those two things. I say this people are trying to get a job, they're going to say yes. I need a strong yes. I say this with women as well to the boys. I say don't don't bother spending your time, your money, your effort on girls that are not a fuck yes, whether they want to see you, yeah. whether they want to come over, whether they want to date you. Yeah. Just you don't have time for it. Bro, you know, it's funny. That's one of my biggest flaws. I told somebody earlier this year that I, I might let them handle my Instagram completely because I get I get messages, man, and they're, they're not tens. They're... <laughs> There's sevens with really, really, really nice fake boobs. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, but on a Tuesday, you know, so, and that's just the guy in me. I, I, it's funny, this, you know, you should tell your girl this. Um, well, I, I, would, I would tell my girl this, is that you would be shocked at how low down the totem pole I would go just for it to be different. And, and so it's, I know it's, it's super messed up to say it, but it's like, I, I get a lot, dude, a lot, an abundant amount of drop dead knockout ends, but you would be surprised if I was walking home in, in Midtown and some seven with big boobs hit on me. I'd be like, Hey, let's go. You know? So hey, I'm just surprised. Just wanted... I'm surprised just saying seven, to be honest with you, Justin, because if you get me on the right night, I'm, I'm still looking at four. It's like, oh, it's just the testosterone. Whoa, me, bro, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Bro, me too, dude. Uh, it's, it's, and, and I think that's, I think that's the thing that women don't understand about men. I really think they don't get it. They don't understand. It almost is like this feeling that's like physically coming out of you. So no, I, I completely get it. Well, yeah, I and if it were up to you, and I, and I bet, and I bet your girl would love to hear this, you would probably sleep with that girl and want to go home and hold your girl. You probably want to go. If you didn't sleep with your girl. Yeah, you'd want to go yeah. home for a, for a shower and just uh, to yeah to hold your girl. Forget about what yeah. you, forget I mean, about what you've done. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because like all of a sudden it like comes to you like what have I done? Oh, I gotta get the fuck out of here! Like get away. Oh it's, Jesus! It's 
It's a funny thing. Man. I had one um, when I was, I just turned 18. I went on a lad's holiday in uh, Kavos in Greece, really dirty place. And um, I, would, I drank a lot with my buddies. We've been doing shots. And uh, I come outside the bar and my, my boys, they walked off. They left me. They, they just, everyone was drunk and they just left me. And I was sort of throwing up half conscious on the side of the road. And, and there was this hand, it come on the back of my head and it just started rubbing my head and, and asking in this sweet voice, are you all right? Like, can I look after you? Yeah. And this woman, she must have been probably six foot and I don't know, 200 pounds? I'm, I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you exactly. But she actually, picked, she actually picked me up off the side of the road. She, she actually picked me up off the side of the road in her arms and she took me back to her apartment, yeah. um, which was just next door. And, um, yeah. and, she, and she put me in bed and she cleaned me up and I was just so thankful. And she was like, do, do you want to have sex with me? And, and I was like, you, you're really big, but yeah, we'll do it. Fuck it. I'm, I'm grateful that you looked <laughs> after me. And uh, so I did that. Fell asleep, woke up in the morning, man. I woke and I, my God, I looked at her and I just thought, I've got to get out of here. And I ran, I just got out the door, I ran and I went and found my boys. So it was about two miles away from my hotel and I just ran all the way back there. So, sometimes it happens. You know, in the South, they say big girls need loving too, man, so. And that is Good. true, that is true. Um, just one quick one, what's Louisiana gumbo? <laughs> uh, Louisiana gumbo, it's a dish where there's a roux made, where you kind of burn flour in the bottom of a pan and it creates a roux and you put chicken broth in there and you uh, put chicken and sausage and onions and all these different things and it makes like a soup with all these different ingredients in it. And then you, uh, you get some rice done and you put it over rice and it's like a rice soup kind of. It's amazing. I just I just did the uh, the food review show, so that's probably why they're asking. We did yeah. Louisiana gumbo. I, I imported it over the ocean, so we got sports cards. Sports cards UK said shout out to JW for getting me onto Louisiana gumbo, and um, hell yeah, man. We got a question yeah. from from Adam Blondin. He's 15. I currently run a YouTube channel. I'm into business. What's your guys' advice if you were in my situation? Man, you know, I, uh, one thing that I did is I made sure I got help immediately. You know, I didn't try to wing it. But if you're 15, man, you could probably figure it out. Um, I think this question is probably a much more, I don't think I'm as qualified as somebody like Sneeko. Mm. who started at like 13 or something like that. Uh, I think he would know more than me. But one thing that I would tell you just in general about YouTube one thing that I try to really, really do, and I think it's helped me, is I try to be as genuine as I can. Uh, I try to be as what you see is what you get as I possibly can. Um, and I think that'll go a long way because people will resonate. People know when you're lying to them. Mm. So one thing that I would tell any young person, especially, especially a young guy that watches other YouTubers sometimes be something they're probably not. I think there's a lot of that. Um, make sure you're being yourself. Make sure you're being authentic. I think people will pick up on it and you'll do just fine. So good luck, man. Yeah, good luck. Good luck to you, brother. I'll just say, um, I'll just say, Adam, be consistent. Keep, keep posting because you're so far ahead of the game. Like, if you keep posting daily or every week, by the time you get to 20 in five years' time, you're, you're going to be a pro at thumbnails. You're going to be a pro at YouTube filming the whole lot. So whether or not your channel actually takes off, is kind of irrelevant at that point because your skill set is very hireable. Like you'll get a job in the sort of content industry at that age. So I'd just say stick with it, brother. Um, keep keep yeah. going at that and, and learn the skill. Um, I've got another one here from Spoods. Hey guys, awesome stream. Love the video you did with Richard Hart, Justin. Would be awesome to see him do a podcast with Top G himself. Love from the Hexagon community, geez. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I think I'll see. Uh, I just left Andrew, but it looks like I'll probably be seeing him again pretty soon. So maybe, maybe I'll get him on. We'll mix it up. Oh, here's a good, here's a good one, Justin. I like this noise M MK3. I create music with a deep love for it, but struggling to make money. What's your advice on fulfillment versus success? Should I stick at it or chase money? It's a tricky.
tricky question, man. I often say, fuck your passion. Um, I know that that business is tough, but all business is tough. You can only answer that question. What I would make for goddamn sure I was doing is doing something that can be very lucrative as a business, something that you don't need to quote unquote blow up at. If you're, if you're hoping to get discovered and you're going to be poor, I would say don't do it. If you're building a business around something that you actually like doing that can actually explode, be very explosive from a, a money perspective, not a fame perspective, then yeah, do music, man. Stay in it. Just make sure that the margin is there. Uh, go find out. Go look at the lives of people. Let's say you wanted to be a music producer. Go look at the life of the top three producing guys that you actually know, not the biggest ones in Hollywood, but the ones you actually know. Look at their life and see if that's what you want in 20 years. And if it's not, man, go do something else. Yeah, I think that's sound. For, um, for you, Justin, obviously, I, I, I've heard online you're 36. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And, and when did you meet um, like Sterling and Tate and Tristan? 33, I think. 33. So before 33, what, did you sort of feel like a bit of a lone wolf or did you have a pack of guys that you were hanging out with? Because I think a lot of oh, people, man. they're not sure. Go ahead. They're, they're sort of not no, sure I, uh, what to do. Uh, if they should stay with their current friends and try and bring them up or they should look for new friends. I have a lot of people say, oh, my friends are like, they're kind of bringing me down. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to find new buddies. And I've just wondered how yeah, it was for you're you. Not, absolutely. You're not going to bring your friends up. I can tell you that right now not going to bring your friends up. I actually have a really solid group of friends that I went to high school with. But I left for college. We went to different colleges because I wanted to go play football. And then when I moved back home, I moved to the capital city, um, Louisiana, which is Baton Rouge. And all my friends are in Denham Springs. But more importantly than that, they live different lives than I live. They wanted a different life than I wanted. Uh, they're very successful guys, almost all of them are very successful. I'm really, really proud of that group of guys, but they kind of wanted different things in life than I did. For that reason, I chose to stay in Baton Rouge. And I, like I said, I spent a lot of time with YouTubers and, and people online um, learning so I could create the life I wanted. And that's what I was able to do. So I would not, I would not look to turn my friends around because I don't think you're ever going to do that. I would get new friends. If you can't find new friends, then you can find groups. Of course, you can join the war room and find guys that are a lot like me. You can join other groups that are out there. Um, but joining the war room for me was one of the best things I ever did because it helped me find people that aligned with how I felt inside. And I didn't have to be wrong anymore about how I felt. So... Um, that was a very, very, very important step for me in my life. And I would advise anybody that feels like nobody understands them back home to look outward, find a group of people that do understand you so you can find your tribe of people and not have to live in an apologetic way and not have to live in a way that slows you down or makes you feel like you're not reaching your potential. 100%. This is what I tell the boys with um, Gorilla Tribe, my group, and how things started changing for me yeah. is I joined a group. I joined a group, started talking to new guys. How does um, the war room work, Justin? Obviously, I've watched Tate for a long time. I'm interested in that. Um, yeah. How does it actually work in terms of meeting up with guys like yourself, actually connecting uh, with someone at your sort of yeah. caliber? So in the war room, we're all in there every day. Um, it's on Telegram. So Telegram's a platform. So there's rooms for almost every subject any man could want to master. So you bring those questions to those rooms. And if you have a question for any individual member like myself, you just tag me in Telegram and I would see it. In regards to meeting in person, there's in-person meetups all of the time. Mm. A, lot of those, a lot of those meetups are free. You find guys in your city and there's... There's, dude, it's getting to the point where there's war room guys in a lot of cities, more than one. And so there's meetups where guys go to events and do dinners and smoke cigars and things like that. There's, there's what they call feasts. You, so feasts is where you pay, you know, let's say four or $500 and you meet up in, let's say LA for a dinner, a really, really nice dinner. Everybody comes together, 
smoke cigars. You know, you might you might see some of the you know the older guys in the war room, uh, some of the generals, some of these events. I've shown up to events. Uh, they just had a feast in uh, or a meetup in Las Vegas, free event, free event, and I was in town and I heard about it, so I just turned up. You know, so it's it's shit like that, man. And then there's the summits. A lot of times the summits are where you're, you would see somebody like Andrew or Tristan or myself or Sterling. Um, those are higher ticket events, but that's where really where they we go into more teaching and more, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one training with guys in smaller groups, a lot more time, you know, no music, you know, really kind of getting down to the things that are going to help them out in their particular situations, their individual situations. So it's kind of how it breaks out. Um, again, one of the best things I've ever done. I, I, would, I would certainly advise anybody that wanted to get better to join the war room. And one thing I saw on YouTube, on uh, someone's YouTube video, which I had a question about was, they said, it, obviously, I think it's like five five thousand dollars or a little bit under five five k to join the war room. Is that right, Justin? Yep. And then they they just said that there was another fee to join, like a room inside the war room, like an elite room that you could go into. Is that what? What's the deal with that? Is that true or is that not true? No, no. There's not. There's not an elite room inside the war room that I'm aware of. There is a room for millionaires only. So to get in that room, you. you have to verify that you're a millionaire. Got you. Got like. There's no way around it. He, he's not fucking around about how he finds out you. Like, you have to fucking prove it. So there, that room is the only room where it, it separates itself, really. Um, so that's the black card experience. And um, I think I've seen guys <laughs> join the war room, not qualified, and end up in that room. Awesome. So like I said, I said, man, I think the war room is the best decision a young man could ever make. Um, that's not dissing anybody else's uh, group. I think there's always room for more than one group anyway. In fact, I am in part of Tony Robbins' platinum group. I'll be at Tony Robbins' house this year. Nice. You know, shooting nice. the shit with Ray Dalio. Nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and, and, and so, like, I, I don't, there's a certain point in your career where you're going to realize that even if I only learn one thing, that's not really what I'm paying for. At some point in your career, you're going to start to pay to be in a room full of people that could also pay in that, to be in that room. Yeah. I think that's something very, very important to recognize uh, at some point in your career is that, you know what? I'm paying to be in this room with these other guys. That's what I'm paying for. And I think I know the answer to this question, but what would you say about investments for young guys? Because so many people are looking at like crypto and different stocks and shares and they want to make a, some quick money. What would you say about investing when you're young? What should you do? I, I think you should invest, but I also think you should invest in yourself more than anything in the beginning. Um, I, I think educating yourself is going to allow you to do way more in, in the lifespan of your career than dumping it all into some kind of shit coin. I don't, I look at the guys that really, really blew up with crypto as like lottery winners. Mm. And I've met a bunch of them and I find, especially a lot of the young ones to be a bit hollow inside from the perspective that they've not gone through a whole lot and they're like, holy fuck, I got all this money. What do I do? I don't, I don't, I've not been through this. I've not been through that. I've not had my heart broke. I'm like, I, they're, and they're kind of targets in a way. And I, and I don't dislike them. I actually like almost everyone I've ever met, but I, I feel like there's this anxious hollowness to some of the guys that really hit big booms in crypto and didn't have to earn it and didn't have to go through any pain, if that makes sense. So I feel like developing yourself will allow you to feel confident that if you were dropped in any market in the world that you could make money, that you could, that you could really, really, really have control of your future. So I'd invest in myself first. Should you buy crypto? Yes, you should. But I would only buy ETH and Ethereum. I, I just think the likelihood of you catching some kind of crazy pump on some kind of crazy coin is probably not there. Uh, certainly not as there as much as I think it probably was a few years ago. Mm. And, and just be patient and know that doing the work is worth it. And that's the thing that's going to give you the highest level of confidence and ability to continue as you get older. And I think that's what you really want. You don't want it quick. You want it to be solid. 
how can young guys go and build this character? How, how do you build character as a young man or how, how did you build it to the point where you are now? I did it with the gym. I did it with combat sports. I did it with football. I think football is probably the biggest. Um, going through physical pain, I think, is very important because you can always reference it against mental pain when, when mental pain comes. So if you've gone through a lot of physical pain and stress comes mentally, you can remind yourself of times where you were physically broken and you kept going. So what is a little stress in your head? I think, I think that's one thing that... A lot of young guys that, that buckle under pressure can't handle. And I think it's because sports are less popular, in my opinion, than they once were. Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, doing hard things outside or in conditions that are not comfortable are not as popular as they used to be. And so it makes it a bit harder to overcome mental stress because you've not gone through enough physical stress. So case in point, again, is why you should be working out. Uh, I, fuck, I went to the gym this morning and just lived in the squat rack, and I did not fucking want to. Uh, but because of that, I believe my day is going to be substantially easier. I have this with you now, and then I go to, to meet a guy I'm trying to buy some apartment buildings from, like we were talking about earlier. So that's going to be a breeze in comparison of, to what my morning was. So Easy. I would... Uh, I would I would invest in myself. I'd do it with fitness. I'd go find pain as a young guy and uh, invest in myself and hedge with a little Bitcoin if you want to or some real estate. But make sure you're spending the money on your competence because your competence is going to allow you to get things uh, that money can't buy. I've got, another, I've got another super chat for you. Baylor Ravensburger. $20. Thank you, Raven. Um, I'm between two careers right now. I'm starting the GC job while also becoming a life and health insurance agent at the same time. I'm in the gym every day working 14 hour days and train BJJ and Muay Thai. How do I manage my time? Sounds like he's managing just fine. <laughs> sounds like he's doing a lot. <laughs> sounds like he's super managing. Yeah, man. Yeah, sounds like you're super on it, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing very so, well. You're doing very, very well. Just keep keep up the good work. Doing great, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Adam's asked, Adam Blondin, what's your advice for networking at my age? And he hasn't put his own, he hasn't put his age, but I think he might have asked the question. Yeah. Did he ask one earlier? I think this is the guy that's 15. He's on the YouTube. How would he network at his age? Is there a, is there a cap on war room? What age you can be? Yeah, you can join the war room until you're 18. Got you. Um, well, you can, yeah, man, that's a tough one. Eh? You can join my tribe. You can join my tribe. We've got quite a few guys that are under 18 in there that talk to each other, ask the older guys questions on the WhatsApp group. So you're more than welcome, Adam. If you want to join Gorilla Tribe, you can. Uh, just drop me a DM if you join, and I'll make sure you find whatever you're looking for, accountability partner, or answer any questions of yours. So if you do need help, you want to network love with some that. guys, yeah, you can, you can come through I to love the Gorilla that, man. Tribe. No yeah, problem. man, absolutely. He should do that. He should absolutely do that. He should take you up on that. And then we've got another one from 180 Life. Similar question. How would you recommend finding a mentor? I work in the cybersecurity space. I don't think there's a better way to find... Well, if, if you're trying to find it in the cybersecurity space, um, then I think that you want to join associations. Uh, one thing I did... And early in my career, I found an association around metal buildings, and I found all the big hitters in my space, the guys that were making millions of dollars a year hanging steel. And, I, and after meeting them and being, like, really humble and, and asking them questions, they really kind of took me under their wing in a lot of ways. Um, they would call me when things happened. I had a truck stolen from my hotel. I lost a bunch of money because the truck was full of tools. And, you know, they call and they're like, well, I remember the first time I had a truck stolen or when I'd get in a cash flow pinch and I thought that I would have to go bankrupt because I was owed so much money and I couldn't, I couldn't get it fast enough to cover payroll. They would call me and, and encourage me and they would tell me how to dodge problems and about mistakes that they had made. So I would just join an organization, man, and be really hat in hand honest that, hey, I'm, I, uh, I really look up to you. Um, if I ever have a question, would it be okay if I text you? 
or sent you an email or whatever or called you, you're going to say yes, bro. You're going to say yes. I, I can guarantee fucking you. They'd have to be like the biggest dickhead on the planet not to take you under their wing. And they'll love it. They'll love it more than you will, I'm telling you. So um, I would do that. I'd join an organization that did exactly what I wanted to do. I'd go find the guys that were 20 years ahead of me, ask them every question in the world, and to double check to make sure I wanted to do it, pay close, close attention to their life and how much they enjoy that job. Make sure it's something you actually want to do. So that's what I would do, man. Yeah, I like that. I think everyone likes to feel important, right? So I think more, more often than not, you ask a guy that's working a job and, and he's doing well and he wants to talk about it. So I think it's yeah, easier, yep. to, easier to find a mentor than you think out there in the world. Um, I've got a question for you, Justin. I, I did a video. One of my first videos I ever did was how to get a girl into bed. Um, and I ran, guys, I ran guys through my strategy for taking a girl from a date, for example, back home. And, and the things that I do, and um, I just wanted to ask you what yours was. And then I'll give you mine. I'll tell you mine. I think there, there's, there's subtleties, and then I think there's the overarching. So I'll start off with the subtleties. I like to sit directly next to the girl. I want our knees to be able to touch. Uh, that way, when I'm laughing, there can be hands on knees, there can be hands on back, like there can be interaction touching. Uh, and your faces are closer together, uh, which means eye contact. Um, you know, you can see if her eyes are dilated easier. You can make that connection with her easier. And that brings me to the next thing, is you want to be able to connect with the girl. I like to be just as upfront and who I am and my views and try to create a connection with the, with the human being, man. Like girls aren't inanimate objects, you know, so they want to feel a connection. And if they're going to sleep with you, don't you think they want to connect with you? So be there, be present, put your fucking phone up, see if you can get eye to eye with her, see if you can break the touch barrier, see if you guys can laugh and, 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 and get along and, and see eye to eye on some views. And man, You'd be surprised at, at, at how much, you know, just being a really cool person will help you out with women. So do that. Don't, don't worry about, like, negging her or anything like that. Just be who you are and, and be in the moment with her there, full attention, and I think you'll do just fine. What about... But don't put a table... I, I have this one that I do, Justin. So I will... Uh, when I get home... So what I'm more talking about is when you get a girl back, and she's in your apartment. Oh, back to the house? How do we escalate from being now in the house, talking to each other in the house, having some drinks in the house? How do we escalate and take it to the bedroom? I would say same thing, man. Make sure there's nothing between you. Make sure you need a knee. Once she's in the house, it's a checkmate, in my opinion. Um, but I would do that. I, I typically would deep foreplay in the common space, but make sure it gets very, very escalatedly aggressive when you start kissing. Yeah. You get stronger with your hands, you get stronger with the grip, and you're not hurting her. You're not pulling her hair, nothing crazy. Maybe light choking, light, like super light kind of from the side. Put your thumb up like up under her ear, up, like light. And uh, yeah, bro, it gets handsy from there, dude. I mean, I... I you know, I've never really thought about this. I do. You know what I'm saying? It's always, it's always been so na like maybe I'm a bad coach at no, this. I, I, I don't think, know, man. It's I think just, you're you're. It's, I feel like you fucking. You feel like you know, bro. It's primal, yeah. man. You know if she wants to fuck. What do you mean? You're a natural. You know? I, I wasn't as much as a natural. I was too much in my head. So I was thinking. So I had to come up with a strategy for me to to be more normal, to to make it smoother, because I I would find myself talking for too long when I got home. So my strategy was. Yeah. I had this bathroom that you could open the main, you could open like the wall of the bathroom and you could see into it. You could see through a little window into the shower and you could see it from the bedroom. So I'd go and I'd say, look, I'm gonna have a shower. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna go and get in the shower. And then I would open up the window after I was showering, I'd say, would you like to come and join me in the shower? And every, well, every time I tried it, the girls always said yes. And that took us from talking in the bedroom to now both being in the shower naked together. So that was always my play was, let's take it to the shower clean each other, and then back to the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I've never done that. I, I would say this. <laughs> if 
you own it and you start kissing the girl and you just fucking own it and and grab her and pull her and take her like it's and there's no second guessing in you you do it with pure conviction she will think it's hot or if it gets really hot and heavy and you just pick her up around her waist and you just carry her in there and just chunk her ass on the bet dude i'm a hundred of a million out of a million on that or whatever so uh epic i think whatever you, do, you must do it with conviction i think so and uh boys don't be afraid to just talk a little bit less and just start start getting it on because she's home with you for a reason she doesn't want you there just talking to her all night like she's come back there's a reason she's back at your place just remember that yeah, girls are very protective over that. They're not going to put themselves in an atmosphere they don't want to yeah. be in. If they come back home with you, they want to sleep with you. So you need to own it fully. Fully own it. Like, full send. Got a full send <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing. Full send it. Yeah. Um, one super chat we missed. Rosario Music, thanks for the super chat. $5. What's your advice on standing out in a saturated or competitive market? Just got to be louder, man. Got to be louder than other people. You know, um, if it were, if it were online, I'd say post more, uh, in, in my world, it's so specialized that, um, you just, you gotta be really good at it and you have to have some systems in place to be consistent. But yeah, if you, if you're in a space that's not super niche, then you just gotta be louder. And we've got one here from, uh, John Arthur. What countries do you think are the best places to move to in 2022? Any that you've been to, Justin, that you think, fuck, I want to live there? I wouldn't mind living in Medellin, uh, Colombia. But I don't know how safe it is. You know, Romania is great, but that's largely in part of Andrew and Tristan. Uh, when I say largely, probably 95%, in my opinion. Wonderful place. There's nothing wrong with it, but it wouldn't be the same without them. Um, can't go to Ukraine, really. Uh, London's a shithole, no offense. Uh, I'm not trying to get stabbed from my watch. Nope. So, you know, I think, I think South America's pretty lit. I actually don't shit on America. I think that if you have tough skin and you're cool with girls, like, beefing you a little bit, but, like, mm. not actually leaving, America's fine, bro. <laughs> like, I do great in America. Um, What's your experience? But Europe? Justin, with, uh, when English guys come to America, what's your experience... Would my guys from England, would we clean up in America for the girls? Or are they bro, not that would much? fucking kill it in America, bro. you kill it in America. I think you would, man. Oh, I think you'd kill it. That's I good. I'll, I'll see you yeah, in, my, you I'll see in Miami. Over here. Yeah. I'm going to... Um, so, that's the thing. I've got no advantage accent-wise in America, or really anywhere for that matter, really. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask that. Where did your accent work, or it doesn't work, really? I don't think it works. I've never, I have women tell me that my voice is sexy, but it, they never say accent. They okay. say your voice. A lot of these women are American women. So I don't, um, I don't particularly think that my accent helps me at all. If anything, you know, like a Southern accent is not even, it's not even a sought after accent, you know? So, uh, Pretty cool, no, I don't think it helps me. It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm actually big into my country music as well. And I, when I saw that you like your country yeah. music, originally when I first started following you, I was always really hyped because I drive a truck around here. I, I wear a cowboy hat yeah. that says Thailand on it. Yeah. I listen to country music. Um, who's, your favorite country, yeah. who's your favorite country artist, would you say, at the moment? I have two, I'd, I'd say. George Strait, Jason Aldean. I really like Jason Aldean. You ever listened to um, the Dixie Chicks before that, when they were used to be called the Dixie Chicks, and now they're just called the Chicks? I do listen to the Dixie Chicks, man. They have some, they have some good songs, man. They have some good songs for spells. So I won't get too deep into the into my dark game um, bag of tricks to make women fall in love with you. But there, uh -huh. there's a such thing as like having a uh, playlist with a girl. Yeah. And I have something called the Spells of Country Music. Because when you send a girl a song as a dedication, she has to think about you and her in the frame as the main characters in the song. I'll give you two songs uh, that I like to use just off the top of my head, but yeah. one of them is a Dixie Chick song called Cowboy Take Me Away. Fantastic song. Yep, that's classic. And there's a song 
called A Hell of a View by Eric Church. And if you're playing that bad boy, dark love role in the relationship, and she and she's starting to get a vibe for you, and she has, starts to have that feeling that she just wants you to come scoop her up and run away together, Hell of a View is a good song. It's also a really good song to set frame about doing things differently than how the world does it. So if you're if you're pitching this non-monogamy thing, mm -hmm. you kind of got to like create this dissonance between her and the people that are going to tell him, oh, tell her, oh, fuck that. Mm. A song, Hell of a View, is really good for uh, promoting the adventure of that, that, you know, alternate life and alternate experience that you can provide for her. So um, check out Eric Church, Hell of a View. Appreciate that. I've written that down, Justin. Yep. Yeah, that, that's on now. I'm going to have that done. Also, would you say... Ranger Wild Track, if you've got it in the in the States, I think you do, or the Raptor. Do you just save up a bit more and go for the Raptor? Uh, what's the question about so you my know trucks? The, yeah, trucks. You know the Ford Ranger Wild Track? There's two types. There's like the Ford Ranger Wild Track and then there's the Ranger Raptor. Yeah, so I'll say this. I like my Ford more than I like my G-Wagon. Um... I drive a Lariat. I probably will not get a Raptor. Okay. And the reason why is because, because I don't think a Raptor matches who I am as a person. Uh, I want people, when I pull up, I'll probably, my next truck will probably be a King Ranch, but I want my, the feeling of me pulling up to be distinguished gentlemen. Okay. And I feel like if I go to Rafter, it's almost a muscle car. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, that, and so I think the Rafters are badass for yeah. the record. I think they're fucking sick. That it's answers. just that, it's just that when I pull up to a project or I pull up to meet an investor, I want it to look like this man is distinguished I can count on him. He's calm. He's composed. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm. And I feel like if I were to get a rafter, it would fuck with that. Okay. So uh, um, I think the rafters are badass, and I, and I, I definitely won't pull up to a meeting in my G-Wagon. Okay. Two, you know? two flash. Two flash scares them off. Yeah. Now, now if I decided to just, like, so my, my, my Lariat's paid off. It's like $60,000 truck. That's that's the one I pull up in now. I mean, it's leather sunroof. Like, in fact, I posted on my Instagram, Jay Waller Seven, plug. Uh, Check it out. This morning, I was in my truck. I mean, it's badass, bro. Black leather seats, wood grain. It's sick. It's got twenty inch rims on it. It's paid off. So I'm not planning on selling that truck. I just I'm in love with it, man. And uh, and I don't like the new ones as much as I like mine. But if I did buy a second truck just to just to you know fuck around in, maybe I would get a Raptor. But I don't think I'd pull up to a meeting in it. So Got that's well, where I'm at. that answers my question because I'm a little bit more I'm I'm a little bit more wild and and sort of I think I could rock the Raptor. Yeah, and you make your money in a different way. Yeah. So exactly, I'm not meeting anybody. I'm just being a sort of a gorilla online. That's that's my main thing. See, I've testosterone gorilla. Yeah, I think it's really good for the flex. Rev, yeah. rev the engine lad. So it makes money good. online, man. Definitely. Yeah, I think 100%. That's I think that's got to be done. What would you say? We've got a super a super chat here from Marley Eden from the UK. How do you approach a girl at 14 years old? Or just just go for a young man. How does a young man actually go up to a girl and give the number? Because guys don't know this these days because of the internet. Yeah, man. I I actually. It's super basic. First thing, first thing I like to do is I try to be most aware of whether a girl's into me or not in the first place. But what I mean by that is this. Let's say you're in the grocery store. If a woman puts herself in your space, if you're in the grocery store and she puts herself in your space and you catch any kind of eye contact, she's probably a little bit interested. Women are used to running away from men grocery store, whatever, they'll go around the whole grocery store to dodge a man they don't want to talk to, that they don't want to get approached by. Um, so I'd look for that. I'd definitely look if she put herself in your space more than once because she's not going to be like, hey, asshole, hit on me. Number two, eye contact. If you can hold eye contact for any more than like a half a second, if she will make eye contact with you, there's a good chance he wants to talk to you. If she doesn't, she will not look your way. So for me, that makes it substantially easier to walk up to a woman. 
And if I'm interested in her, it's as simple as this. You walk up and you say, excuse me, I couldn't help but notice you would not have been upset with myself had I not come to say hello. My name's Justin, what's your name? Oh, it's that simple. You do that, let me tell you what that does. It, ta it, it takes away the corny pickup line or whatever bullshit that you're gonna go throw at her that's mm. probably gonna get on her nerves. It's gonna show honesty. And I think it also shows a bit of vulnerability in there. And it also shows a, a bold boldness and a directness. It's like, excuse me, my name is this. I noticed you. I would have been upset with myself. I would have been mad at myself if I would not have come to speak to you. What's your name? Smooth. I think it's the cleanest way to do it, man. I, I know there's guys that go out there and they teach pickup. And I don't teach pickup, by the way. I'll be very clear about that. But if he's asking me what I do, mm. I want to be bold, I want to be direct, I want to be honest, and I want to sprinkle that little bit of vulnerability in there. And it's kind of funny to say I would have been upset with myself because I would have been a coward if I wouldn't have come and talked to you. So um, I think at a minimum, that is a great um, compliment to give a woman. And if you say that, you will be able to tell based off of body language when she puts her hair behind her ears and opens her body up to you, she smiles, her eyes light up, you know, and y'all are talking back and forth. You'll know, keep it short and be like, hey, listen, I'm interested in uh, seeing you. Maybe we could go get a drink or coffee or whatever, you know, and then you can do number or Instagram or whatever you want to do. But I like the direct, I'm a grown ass man. And since I'm a grown ass man, I walk up to women and tell them I'm interested. That's my personal view has been very, very good for me. Mm. Um, I'm not saying that I'm a guru or a king of picking up women. I'm not saying that. That's not the business I'm in. However, I think women appreciate the honesty and the directness. So that's what I do. Yeah, I think so. I definitely think that you need to be direct. Um, yeah. One sec. Let me just have a look. I, can I add to that? Yeah. And listen, if, she, if she's not interested, say, hey, no problem. I hope you can take it as a compliment. I hope it made your day better. You're a beautiful girl. And then, and then bounce like a man. And what if you, so. get, what if you get rejected but when, when you're... That, and that's the, point I'm, that's the point I'm trying to make to him is that, you know, um, you should always, your goal should always be graceful. So if she says no, say, hey, listen, no problem. I think you're beautiful. I wanted to, I would have been upset with myself. So I hope you can take it as a compliment. Have a wonderful day and walk away. And bro, she's going to do that right there could be the thing that turns her on. I've had that happen with a girl, a girl, I have a boyfriend or something. She's actually a good girl. I hit on her. She's like, I have a boyfriend. You know what? That's absolutely fine. Um, I just wanted to tell you, I hope it makes your day better and be, be upbeat about it, chin up about it, and feel good about it for yourself, man. And I'm telling you, that vibe will be attractive to her. So do it. Yeah, I think so. That, that's what I've always done. And I don't really mind the rejection too much because it's not that bad. I think nope. guys overplay it in their own heads. They make it seem way worse than give, it's actually yeah. going to be. I'll give you another trick that'll help you do that more. Um, remember when I told you about piece of shit receipts? Yeah. You need to get like rejection receipts who can get blown out the worst because what you're so let's say a girl's close to you and and she you can kind of tell she's into you she's giving you the eye from across the room like you're catching eyes if you're not certain and you're never going to be certain then there's a good chance that you might not approach I don't personally have that problem because I, I can't like look myself in the mirror thinking I'm being a coward. But if that is a problem for you and you've let a girl slide by, get in that same group of guys that you have the piece of shit receipts with and create like blowout receipts and be like, guys, I just went and walked up to this girl. I didn't see her wedding ring on or I did or like she said she's a lesbian or she said I'm ugly or whatever. See who can get blown out the most because what you're doing is you're creating a different relationship with that fear. Just like you're creating a different relationship with that guilt by having a piece of shit receipts. And I think, it, I think it'll do a lot for you. you Get that you. group of guys together and see if you guys can laugh at it. And you can be the king of the group. And maybe you didn't get a number, but you'll get a lot more numbers because you won't be scared to approach because you'll have a different relationship with approaching in general. Yeah, you're making, you win either way. You're making that fun rather than you're making it a, a game, basically, to get, to get blown out. Yeah. Which is good for yeah. me. So you either win or win. You either win by getting blown up the biggest and everybody gets to have fun and laugh, uh, or you win by getting the number. So. Yeah, I'm doing a video soon for my guys when my friend gets here. One of the first videos I did was cold approaching, which is like walking up to chicks and picking them up. 
um, yep. and then getting it on camera. But I'm going to do in Thailand 20, 20 in a row and then check my stats. Check my stats. So having that in my brain is going to help me. There you go. It's going to help me massively. But, that, but the, challenge, the challenge should be doing the 20 in a row like a champion. Yeah. You know, the percentage, eh, who gives a fuck? It's a numbers game. Yeah, some have girlfriends, some have, some have boyfriends. It's yep. all good. Um, I've yep. got a few super some, chats some here. Cunt. And then do you, do you need to round it up, Justin? I'm just conscious that maybe I've taken a lot of your time. What time is it, Tom? Tell you what, man, I'm going to uh, you real quick. Coffee. And then uh, we can jump in I, another 30 minutes after that. Sweet. Yeah, my meeting's at four. Yeah. All right, cool. So can you give me five minutes? Yeah. Or two minutes? You go for it, brother. Yeah, you go for it. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't see you looking at me there. Gorilla's coming back, guys. Gorilla's coming back. There we go. One set, Justin. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. There we go. Rick. Dr. Pepper, I don't even know how it got in there. What's your, are, are, what's your, are we on? Well, yeah, we're on. We're back in. What's your opinion okay. on uh, on drinking booze? Because I'm on my channel. I'm pretty big on staying off the booze. So I drink the fuck out of booze. Yeah. But but it makes you fat. It makes you lazy. I'm not saying it's good for you. Uh, but I'm also 36, man. And in my twenties, I probably drink like once a month, maybe, maybe. 
So you'd say so, leave, I mean, leave it for a later date? It's not even that. I don't think my way is the right way. I think if I could snap my fingers and not, not drink vodka or whiskey, I would. It's just life is not as fun, mm. you know? What is it about that uh, that you find, like, super fun? Because for me, it was always more messy for me and, and probably not as enjoyable when I was a big drinker, whereas now I don't really drink at all. Um, do you, my hangovers are terrible as well. I get super bad anxiety when I, when I, drink, when I drink booze. Do you get that? Uh, no, I don't, I don't get anxiety from drinking. Um, I just feel like l- life is less enjoyable. Um, or let me, not even less enjoyable as much as I have a lot of fun, but you have to take into consideration what I'm doing. You know, I'm on a yacht in Dubai getting boozed up with Andrew and Tristan and mm. Sterling. Like to, when, when Tristan Tate hands you a bottle of vodka and he's like, neck this, or you're a pussy, are you not like, are you, like, that's fun. I don't, that's not peer pressure. I'm like, okay, bitch, let's go. You know, let's go big boy. It's, it's different. It's different, man. It's it's not the it's, you know it's, uh, you know when you're with people you really love, like in that case, and and you want to be there and you want to be in the moment and you want to enjoy the experience in the way they do, or the way the people that you're with are enjoying it. It's like being with a beautiful woman. You're gonna let her sit there and get drunk on wine and not like, in the moment. You know, with her, ah, to me, man, it's like, I'll take the calories. You know, I got 20 years of lifting. You know, I got a lot of residual muscle, so I just do it, man. I don't know. What to, I wish I had something like really intellectually intelligent to say about it. I just, I, uh, I just, I can't sit here and act like life is not more fun. Um, you know, having a drink every now and then. For for me, I'd say to anyone who's drinking now and they're young and they've not made it yet. Like for someone like you, Justin, you're doing really well. You're obviously with great buddies and you guys are having an amazing time. But if you're drinking and you're yeah. you're doing it because you hate your life, you're, you're drinking to hide away from from what your normal life is, you need to cut that shit out because that'll sap your energy away yeah. from you, the, the energy you need to improve. That is absolutely dead on. I, I don't think I've ever drank because I was upset. And I think that's a big distinguishing factor is whether you should drink or not is the reason you're drinking. I also don't drink to just get fucked up for no reason. It's normally with people I either very much love or it's networking. So um, in the event that it's Tristan, it's very much love. In the event it's, you know, a business event or something of that nature, it's networking. So, or it's both. So um, just understand why you're drinking or why you're doing a certain thing, I think is probably the most important. I've got a, a super chat from Baylor. Advice for having two girlfriends. I work with both of them and they don't know about each other. Should I tell them or leave both of them? Wouldn't leave both of them. You know, you can tell them. Um, maybe you can find out if you think the other one, if they think each other are hot or not, but... Baylor, what are you... Um, whatever. What are you doing, so, Baylor? Two girls at the same at the same work at the same job, Bailey. You don't know the rules. You you don't shit where you eat, bro. Bullshit. Hey, bro. That's like that's the greatest piece of shit receipt I've heard all day. So <laughs> I'm cool with it, man. You're dude. This guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> so uh, and and I mean that in like the best way. Um, yeah, man. You can just tell them, or you get busted. You know, or you can get busted and own it. Either way, own it. Own it completely, man. Own it completely, like, yeah, what about it? You know? Did you or ever say, hey, listen, what? Do you, do you ever have any that you lied to, Justin? Any, any girls that you lied to? Because I, I had one, one of my girlfriends I lied to was the worst thing I ever did. I've lied to girls. I've lied to girls, but it's shit. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, man. I'll, I'll tell you this. So I got busted by a girl. Because I don't, like, just bring it up, right? I'm not just going to bring it up. But I'll tell you what I had happen to me very recently. I had this girl that thinks she had me caught. So what she did is she was like, so you got a girlfriend? And I'm like, what about it? You know, uh, I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, you know, she was like trying to act like she had me caught. And then she sends me a screenshot. I said, that's not my girlfriend. That's my wife. 
by the way, I sent her a picture of you. She thinks you're hot. You should come over. Completely fucking owned it. Worked. Done. So you just own it. And I've been caught at least four times this year, just like that. She thinks she's got something on you. She's texting you. She's like trying to hint to it. As long as you hold the fucking frame, bro. But yeah, what about it? What's that got to do with me and you? Get your ass over here. Like fucking just own it. Dude, they like it. They like it because women like to compete and they don't want a man another woman doesn't want. Why do you think you married guys get hit on so much? Somebody wants their ass. They're they're a commodity. Somebody wants them. Women want that shit. That's how they compete. We compete amongst each other, and they compete for the best men. And the best men are generally won about other women. So if 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 another woman sees you with another woman, it's gonna turn her on, bro. Just own it. Don't be a pussy because you're taking all that energy of the man women want and turn it into a little bitch. Just own it, bro. But yep, off of both y'all. What's up? Don't apologize. Don't ever fucking apologize. Cause you're not sorry. I'm fucking sorry, bro. Just do it. Tell the truth. I'd tell them both, bro, if I were you. I don't care. There's a lot of... Tell, find which one of them or more buy. Then, then you really have a play. So if I had that situation, I'd take the one that I like the most and like me the most, and I'd see if I could, like, get her in the scenario of a threesome and say, baby, I've been really wanting to have a threesome, blah, 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 boom. Now you got her in your corner. So when that other girl comes at you or you get caught, you'd be like, baby, I was trying to set up the threesome. I was trying to set it up for us. Or, or if the other girl catches you and she finds out you're with that main girl, the one you picked, then you'd be like, so my girl knows what's up. I've had that happen. Had a girl. She's like sending me pictures. Of my, and, I, and because what happened is I matched with her on a dating app. She's like, I can't believe this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man, my girl knows. So whatever. So she messages my fucking girl. My girl's like, ah, oh, sorry for the shenanigans, girlfriend. Ha ha ha. And I'm like, checkmate, bitch. <laughs> on the date nap. Yeah, and when you so, when you don't oh, lie, when you don't lie, you just feel you just feel so much better. Yeah, you got nothing to hide from, yeah, bro. You got not nothing worth to hide it. from, and, and and that's why I'm so adamant about if you have a main chick and you don't lie to her and she stays with you, you better treat her like fucking gold, bro. Hundred percent. Treat her like gold. Yeah, that's definitely. She deserves it. Got oh, you know how much of a beast my chick had to be to be like, sorry, sorry for getting you in our shenanigans. And I'm like, suck it, bitch. You thought you had me in trouble? Get the fuck out of here. Oh. Badass, though. Badass girl. You still, you still see that chick? What, what's your setup at the moment, if you can talk about it? What's up? What, what's your setup at the moment, Justin, like with chicks? You still see that girl or if you can talk about it? I don't know. How much oh, I can't say. share that. I, oh, can't, right. I can't share that publicly. Uh, I can share it to you privately. That's all right. We'll talk about um, but, it after. Uh, mostly these days, I'm not seeing any women. All right. Just going to church. Yeah. You know. You're a man of God. Yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, lovely. No, that's all right. And uh, changing subjects. Jay Hurrod. I'm 15, going to my first business networking event right now in Australia. At 5.30 a.m., I'm going to the gym and doing door-to-door sales after. Life's so much better when you're accomplishing stuff. That's all he said. Nice, man. I think he's right. It's only we missed. I'm nine to five trying to support my family. This is from Costa Rica. I'm nine to five trying to, trying to support my family. Want to bring in more money, but never seem to have enough energy after work. I'm only 22. Any advice? As a family? He's trying to support his family, yeah. So maybe he's trying to support his mum or dad or he's got kids. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you gotta go to the internet, man. So, you gotta find a way to make money online. There's enough free information on the internet, I think you probably do that, so. You gotta, you gotta learn how to make money online. Mm-hmm. And I think you just, uh, for me, like, you, when you're growing up, you don't know about the opportunities that are out there. You don't have the information that you need to make, to make the right move. So just get information as fast as possible. Are you, um, are you much of a reader, Justin? Do you read quite a lot of books? Yeah, I do. I listen to them. I don't read them, but right. I listen to them. I one a month. All right. What, yep. what are your favorites? My favorite books. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad is up there. Tax-Free Wealth by Tom Wilwright. Um, E-Myth is up there. Traction. The book that I like by uh, named Gino, I forget his last name, Quickman. 
Um, and then there's a series of books by Patrick Lencioni, the ideal team player, Getting Naked, um, Death by Meeting, um, Five Roles of a, of a CEO. I, I love all of Patrick Lencioni's books. I think they're very, very good books. So. Nice. I'd say uh, uh, Ken McElroy, ABC's of Real Estate Investing. I love Ken. Ken McElroy's my fucking boy, bro. I love Ken McElroy. Yeah, Big Ken McElroy fan. You ever read um, any Tony Robbins? I know you said you're going to his house. Do you, do you read any of his books? Yeah, I've read a bunch. Of, I, I read Money Master the Game. Yeah. Um, was that worth reading? Read that? Or was it Was it worth it? Because I've got it. I don't think it's going to blow you away. Okay. I think it's. You know what I would say that book is? That book is a good example of hearing something enough times to put it in motion. And I just, that's what I remember about the book. I, I can't really go into the details much of, of what I really took away from it. But it, was, it wasn't very aggressive. It was really just compounding interest, really. Um, what other book? I've read multiple Tony Robbins books. I've actually done a couple of his courses, like his life courses or like planning and scheduling courses and things like that. Did they help? Uh, so yeah, I do. I think so. But also think you have to be in a place to be like really excited and motivated to do it. I think being a young guy, fuck yeah, do it. You know, cause I read his book. Um, what was his one? Awaken the giant within. I, I recommend massively. Um, that book really helped me just control my, get control over my emotions, understand how I was feeling. Um, as a young man, because I think you just feel so volatile when you're when you're younger. Your emotions are up here. Does that go away as you as you get older, Justin? I was just talking to Sneeko about this. Oh, it doesn't go away. It's less sharp, and you've been through enough reps and you have enough callus on you that you respond differently. It doesn't mean I don't get angry. It just means that I know that the effort. In the in the outward energy is not worth it. So I I don't particularly think you choose not to get as mad about things as you get older because you've been through it enough times where it's not as much as a shock to you that it's happening. So you're not surprised certain things happen, and then you've been through them before, so they're less of a, a jolt, if that makes sense. So. You choose not to get as mad and you choose not to exert as much energy on something that you can't change. And that's like an experience thing. And, and honestly, that's probably the closest thing to wisdom that I think actually exists because I think there's plenty of people that are older that are dumbasses. Um, and I think we can, all, we can all really just learn from our own experience and really evaluating whether it makes sense to use that amount of energy uh, in the form of anger or if it makes more sense to do things to make sure your situation is better and those things don't happen what about this sort of sting of heartbreak have you does that does that go away as you get older does that get lessened yep in fact i think that's a great example of what we just talked about because the first two heartbreaks are going to be the most agonizing painful fucking thing you ever go through you would rather physically have your ass whipped If you have it done and you get it done right and it really fucking stings, I think that in some way, just like I was saying before, you're like, okay, I've been here. I'm not going to die. It's going to take about 18 months for me to get over it. It's going to sting. I'll probably still start. I'll start seeing other women. I'm going to feel sad because it's not the girl I love, but I need to go ahead and get through it. And also you'll find if you get your heart broken, sometimes those are the best opportunities to grow as a person. You have all this new free time. You have all this pent up energy. It's a great time to get in shape. Um, you'll never be as motivated as when your heart is broken. So uh, you have to look at it for the positive. Let it hurt. Um, I'm a big fan of no contact. Big fan. Um, that's a whole nother podcast, but um, it's really a time where you really get to test your mind, which is uh, if you're not sure how to do that, there's a course in the war room called Iron Mind. And it can really, really help you if you're going through a heartbreak or you're not able to get something done you're trying to achieve. So if you're interested in that, hit me up on Instagram, jwaller7. But Iron Mind 
is the number one thing that comes to mind if if you're in a heartbreak scenario it will wear off in time and i don't think you can get your heart broken as badly as probably the first couple of times the first couple of times it hurts man it's puppy love bro think you're gonna be together forever you're not g you're not and you're gonna be okay and you don't want to hear that so i can sit here and tell you you're gonna be okay it doesn't make you feel any better so you think she's the one bro and that's okay yeah so that just know one. that it's gonna last about 18 months and you'll be fine that first one will make you do some crazy things i did some crazy things when my first one ended that was a wild wild yeah time. man it stings bro it hurts bro. can it you sucks. remember yours can, can, I've been there. can you remember yours was yours your high school girlfriend or yeah i still talk to her man yeah love her to death love her to death great girl that's good you talk. Girl. Yeah, me, me and mine, we don't talk. I think I'm, I might be blocked. So I'll have to check. But It'll come around. Yeah. It'll come around. I, I can almost guarantee, bro, if you don't try to contact her, it will come around. That's good. Yeah, I had one, my, my most recent, because I left one to, um, to come to Thailand. I was in, a, in an LTR before I uh, came to Thailand, and then I was like, this isn't me. It feels too serious. We'd moved in together. It was like, should we get a dog? What should we start doing now? And for me, I just felt I'm not done. Like, I need some, I've got some living to do. And um, yeah, so I left her. Well, that doesn't go away, bro. I'm gonna tell you, I'm 36 and I still feel that way. I want to live my life on my terms. But you have to create a scenario where you you can you can ask for that and get it. Is and I, I think you're obviously on your way to doing that. Or clearly you have. So congratulations uh, uh, to you. Thanks, man. Are kids on your radar? Yeah, I believe in family fully. I think having children is beautiful. And uh, do you have any idea, like, have you started thinking when that would be in terms of an age? Are you just waiting for it to happen? For me to have children? Yeah, yeah. Who says I don't have kids, bro? Ah. Do you have kids? Can't say on the internet. If okay. I did, I, I wouldn't be able to say. But, yeah, I, I believe in children fully. I think family's beautiful. I think it is a beautiful thing. And I think loving a woman is beautiful. And I think being a good father is a beautiful thing. I just think that society's definition of that needs to change and what that actually looks like needs to change. I'm on the road a lot. Let's say I did have children. Mm. I'm on the road a lot, right? Well, I'm on the road creating a future for said children coming home, possibly taking those children all over the place get to see all these things and they get a good dad that takes care of them, that takes care of their mother. Maybe their mother gets to stay at home and raise them. Uh, maybe, maybe dad's a superhero. Maybe dad's for all of eternity went to war for 18 months, two years and didn't come home. I'm gone a month, why? You know, I'm a bad person. I got FaceTime, motherfucker. If I had a kid, I'd probably have a camera where I could see that child anytime I wanted to. You feel me? So, I mean, am I really like I'm the I would I would be hypothetically the best father on the fucking planet and husband. So I don't uh, I don't have any problem having kids. In fact, I'm going to have quite a few. I agree. Yeah. But for me, I'm I'm only with multiple women. So, you know, does that make me a bad dad? No, because people have kids and then they get divorced and they do step kids. Fucking dumb. I just do it how I want to. Well, all the all the no. kings did it. All the kings had uh, multiple wives and multiple children. So I think it's a, if that's yep. what you want to do, that's a good yep. thing to do. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I'm only tw- I'm only 23, so it's not really so much on my radar. Um, I'll definitely yeah, want and children. it shouldn't be. It yeah. shouldn't be. I don't think people should have kids until they have something they can give them. Mm. So whether that be educating them, what the only thing I'd want to give to my children. I I have a fantasy, like a dream, like a daydream, which I will make happen. Um, I've already started the process. And then I have an overarching goal. And so the overarching goal is to educate them and show them what the world truly is by by making sure they're traveled, well-traveled, cultured, educated on the actual facts of what's going on in the world, and then educate them on how to put themselves in a position to have choice. Financial education, business, 
understanding of the world, understanding of economies, understanding how things work, sales. And so if they have truth and they've put their self in a position in their life where they have choice, I think that's the greatest gift that you could give a child because I'm gonna love them regardless. Let's say I had a daughter and she wanted to be a lesbian. Fine, I just wanna give you the truth of the world and give you and make sure you have choice. Make sure you're doing that, living your life on your terms, not living with some man because you have to. Or if it were a son, same thing, if he were gay. Okay, bro, I love you. I just want you to have, and I say, I'm using gay as a placeholder, I don't give a fuck. Um, I would, I would love my son, whatever he wanted to do, I would just want to make sure that he understood exactly what he was doing, how the world works, and then he would have choice. And then my, my little, um, my little, my little vision for when I'm gone is that my children are sitting in a room and a gentleman walks in, he says, okay, well, listen, this is what your dad did. And they have to sit there and be like, wait a second. So he did this and then this, and now we get this with no taxes. And they all have to just lean back and be like, bro, dad, dad's a fucking G, you know? Like he hooked us up, you know? And then maybe a little note, like, love you fuckers. And that's it. Like, have fun. And that would be, that would be my vision is that like, they had to be like, he did what and then did what? And now we get this and we don't have to, as a fucking G. That's my dream, bro. So yeah, I believe in kids and family and all that shit. How would you, sure, um, big time. How would you, how would you raise a, a son and a daughter differently? Honestly, not, not much differently. Not much differently at all. I mean, Interesting. Kid, the kid's gonna have, both kids are gonna be trained. Uh, pretty much the same. I think it's pretty easy to say I'll be harder on the boy. Mm. But as far as the way I educate him about the world works and the way things are, I don't think it'll be much different, you know? Uh, for the daughter, it'd be like, look, this is what your mom, you know, has in her life. And this is how we do it. Daddy, you know, you know daddy's got hoes, but he loves your mom. <laughs> oh, and this is why I think she stays. You can ask her. Um, but I'm not, I'm not about like hiding shit from my kids, um, my hypothetical kids. And I'm not about, you know, doing anything but giving them truth. And again, trying to educate them in a way where they have choice in their life. That's boy or girl. I'm not going to love any of them any differently. In fact, if I love any of them more, it'll probably be easier to love the little girls because there'll be less pressure. Yeah, well, personally, I think so. For me, I've always had in my head, and I'm not 100% sure in it, but I feel like a guy or a, a, a boy would need um, just just to have less given to him, where I'd probably prefer to give more to my daughter, like uh, look after her more financially, whereas my son, I might make it harder for him. I'm not going to give him uh, like a silver spoon or, or look after him so well in terms of, of money because I think you've got to have that fight for it yourself. Whereas a girl, I don't think that necessarily brings out the best characteristics in a woman uh, if you make them sort of suffer I'm, that I'm, way. I'm definitely glad you said that because ideally what I would do, you know, that vision I had, I would want him to think he had nothing until. Now, if I go blow it all, highly, highly, end up. like there's no reason for me to do it. Um, because I'm pretty, like, you know how guys are. I'm, I, dude, I would be happy in a, in a single bedroom apartment with one plate and one fork and a rotisserie chicken. So I, I do want to, I do want to make sure that, um, I scare my kids into getting competent, which means, Hey, I'm rich. You're not like the, uh, Shaquille O'Neal does that with his kids. But I, I do want to set up some trust and some shit like that, especially for the girls. I think my, I think any boy that's raised around me will do pretty well. I think so, yeah. Oh, I think he'll learn a lot, 100%. Do you, do you think we have a crisis, yeah. of, of, a crisis of masculinity right now, Justin, and it, in the world? Ask that again, I'm sorry, I could hear do, do you breaking think, up a bit. Do you think we have a, a crisis of masculinity right now in the world? I think we're allowing people to target young boys into not being, almost being asexual in a lot of ways. I think that, I think that even the things that, you know, help us see more women are kind of breaking 
the nuclear family up. Like Instagram, I think, really ruins the family. Dating apps really ruin the family. Um, the reason I think so is because women used to not be as, um, we say, you know, sexually liberated. And I, I think that men's ability to have a buffet of women kind of stops them from settling down. Women's open and almost some kind, sometimes championed way of looking at sex I think hurts both sides because I think women ultimately want to have children and a family. And I think that it, it slows men down from doing it because they can go get sex anywhere and they're going to sleep with one woman the rest of their life. That's why my, my view on it is, is kind of both. Why not have it all? No, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, skirt around. But I'm also never going to fucking leave you ever. I'll take care of you. And you can have children and you can raise them. And I can be gone and be the be the superhero dad, father, husband. And I think that would be my perfect scenario if I was given the choice. Because then you can have love and that natural thing that's never going to go away. Because, dude, I'm telling you, it doesn't go away. So um, if I were given the choice being a fuck boy a stay-at-home dad or the superhero husband dad traveling the world, sons think he's James Bond, daughters think that's a man I can never replace, that's the life I'd want. I don't want to be damn good at it. So if I had kids, I'd be that. Awesome. Where can, uh, where can the guys find you, Justin? Where, where can they come and follow you? You can find me on YouTube, Jay Waller. You can find me on, excuse me, you, yeah, YouTube, Jay Waller, Instagram, Jay Waller7, and join my email list. How do they get to the email list, Thomas? The emails are good. I've got the emails. The emails are good. I can vouch for that. Yep. The email's in the description. Okay, perfect. Yep, and then Waller7J on Twitter. Yeah, boys, thank you very much for watching, Justin. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, it's I been, appreciate it, man. It's been awesome. Boys, I'll see you on the next one. Let me put the gorilla back on. That's a good one. All right, let's close that down.